we'll talk about early education. Um, Senator, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Jamie Schmidt, I actually work for the Iowa Association for the Education of Children, short version, Iowa AYC. Uh, uh, my question is actually in regards to the child care crisis. Like many parts of the country, Iowa is in a child care crisis. Communities across the state are suffering because parents can't afford or find reliable child care. Within the past five years, Iowa has lost over 40% of its registered child care providers. The average annual cost of child care is nearly the same as college tuition at the University of Iowa. In 2016, close to 18,000 Iowa parents were reported to quit a job, not take a job, or change a job because of child care issues. Mm -hmm. When parents have to leave their job or are unable to work due to child care issues, this causes a ripple effect in our community. As president, what actions would you take to ensure that all families have access to affordable and reliable child care and early education so that children are prepared to enter school and parents can work? The, so I would say in my last election in 2016 for the Senate, the most seminal moment for me was a moment in when I was in Rifle, Colorado, in an early childhood center. And the moms were there, and they were happy to have it because before that child care center was there, they had to drive 35 miles to a town mm -hmm. called Glenwood to be able to, which is through a, a very tough canyon, a beautiful canyon, but, you know, you don't want to drive it both ways on a given day. So they were glad it was there. But one of the moms said to me while we were there, she said, I work so I can have health insurance, and every dollar that I make goes to pay for this early childhood center so I can work. That's the triangle that so many people in America are, are, are trapped in right now. And, I mean, my first answer to that is the American Family Act, which I mentioned earlier, which would be that dramatic increase to the child tax credit so that families have cash flow so that on a monthly basis they can make decisions about how to pay for um, uh, groceries and, and for early childhood care or child care. You know, if I had to summarize the last 10 years of my town halls, it's people coming saying, we're working really hard, but we can't afford some combination of housing, health care, early childhood education, or higher education. And for the parents that don't come to my town halls, but I know well from when I was the school superintendent, it's people saying, no matter how hard we work, we can't get our kids out of poverty. And that's why, both in terms of, the, and that's why I've been focused on how to drive those incomes up, both in terms of the American Family Act and also the work that Sherrod Brown and I have done on the Earned Income Tax Credit, those two things combined together with an increase in the minimum wage and paid family leave could make a huge difference for families and give them the opportunity to be able to at least have a fighting chance to pay for early childhood education. But as a country, we got to provide early childhood education and we have to provide quality. It's not enough just to say we're doing, we're providing access, we need quality. and. In, in Denver, what we did was we passed a sales tax increase that paid for early childhood. That, that was just four-year-olds, some three-year-olds, not zero to, to five, which is what we have to get to as a country. Uh, I call, I, I've been struck in this campaign. Um, if you ask uh, focus groups all over America, what does the Democratic Party stand for in education, what they would tell you is, free college. And I, I actually don't believe that's where we should be. I think we should be focused on free preschool and early childhood education and daycare for the reasons that you said, as well as what to do with the 70 percent of kids that graduate from high school don't go to college but can only earn a minimum wage. I, I think our focus should be in those two places. And I my plan calls for universal pre-K, uh, as well as uh, home visits beginning at zero and before zero so that kids and their families are getting the sorts of um, vocabulary building, literacy skills, and other kinds of uh, educational related skills that we can provide them so that by the time they get to kindergarten they're actually ready. As you know, if a kid, a poor kid, shows up at kindergarten not having had preschool, not having had early childhood, um, they have... Um, uh, they've heard 30 million fewer words than their more affluent peers, and that's just deeply unfair, you know, mm -hmm. it, it deeply unfair. The final point I'll make is a mystery to me. So this is a, something we have to continue to work on together, which is how we can pay people so little who are in these jobs that for our youngest and most vulnerable children, 
and at the same time have those um, early childhood centers cost so much for the families that are actually trying to benefit from them. And I don't know the solution to that. That's something that I worry a lot about, um, especially in urban and rural uh, areas that are underserved in, in our communities. You mentioned, I didn't answer your question about underserved areas in terms of uh, pediatric care, but that's another issue as well. And um, and and we're going to have to invest more resources as a nation in this. And that's not going to happen if kids aren't a priority, which is why the work you're doing, not just in this caucus, but in your daily life, is so important to changing the priorities that we have. You would think that America's kids were someone else's kids, not America's kids, based on how we treat them in Washington, D.C. And I, I would change that if I were president. Well, that's great. We, that, that's exactly what we would like to hear. <laughs> uh, um, uh, next, I uh, will talk about uh, safety and well-being, um, and so I'll turn it over to Anne. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us Thank today, you for so. giving me some time. Yeah. Well, I'm Ann Disher. I'm with the Child and Family Policy Center here in Des Moines. We're a child advocacy shop. We work across a lot of issues trying to engage our state and federal lawmakers to make good choices on, on 